coming right there. Hey guys, welcome back to Tactical Rifleman. And we're going to talk about water storage for survival preparedness, stuff like that. But before we do that, I'm going to give a shout out for this week's sponsor. We've got a bunch of videos you can find in our video archive that talk about like the survival basics. Uh, and we, my friend, we have one that's actually called survival basics. What, you know, uh, what things you should do to be better prepared, your, your family, whether it's a natural disaster or anything like that, right? And again, you can find those videos in our video archive. Now, you know, we touch on the basics, you know, shelter, air, fire, uh, water, everything. You get into food, we get all the way into um, preparedness, self-defense, all kinds of things, communications. Today, I just want to focus more on just the subject of water storage. Now, the CDC, the same as the, uh, the um, of FEMA, they both say that when you're preparing your family, you need to have a minimum of one gallon of water per person in your household per day. They recommend a minimum of three days, but. Uh, but they recommend, they want you to have at least two weeks of everything, food, water, everything, all right? So that's fine, but everybody knows you're, gonna, you're probably gonna need a lot longer than that. I, we've had ice storms that have come through Western Kentucky here where guys in my SF company were without power for 25 days. You just, you live out in the boondocks, whatever. You live a little closer to society. Okay, you might need less, but plan on one gallon per person per day for two weeks. All right, now, when you start looking at sources of water, uh, are you on utilities? 99.9% .9 of us are, so you're getting water from the city, but where do they get it? And uh, you know, are they getting it from a local uh, spring? Like my town that I live in used to get it from a local spring. They no longer get it there. It's piped in from a nearby city. Right? Uh, the, my reason for saying that is how are you going to have access to this water after the electricity is cut off? I'm kind of in a good spot where we're at. Uh, I've got a water tower just up on the hill. And even if power is cut off, it, uh, it's going to take a while. Gravity is going to help continue to give me water pressure here so we could fill water containers, things like that. Other sources you can look at, uh, if you've got a swimming pool, all right, 46,000 gallons of water in an in-ground swimming pool, depending on the size. If you've got streams and springs on your property nearby, uh, but you can also look at uh, rain collection. Do you have to do that year round? And there's some places that do that. You go to Greenland, Iceland, they gather all the water off of their roofs year round. But I understand anytime a bird shits on your roof, that's going into your water supply. So you've got to think a very, very robust uh, filtration system, and then you still got to treat it chemically. You, you've got to look at that stuff. So having rain collection in your bag of tricks. You don't have to stay hooked up year round. You can literally just have the PVC pipes ahead of time, the proper piping already laid in, saved. So worst case scenario, if you had to go back and pipe that in. Me, I've got it nice and easy. I can run all my gutters back into my swimming pool, collect the water that way. So anyways, I'm, sources think ahead of time, what sources of water do you have? Just because you have a nearby stream or creek or river that's a, a mile away or even a half mile away, understand you walking a half mile carrying water buckets, that's a mile round trip just for two buckets of water. Not a, you need to have a better plan than that. Now, once you get that water, whether it's water runoff, whether you're pulling it out of a swimming pool, whether you've got jugs and tanks of water uh, you've got to you've got to treat it now the CDC and FEMA they recommend you use bleach I'm not big on that for one thing you've got to use bleach that does not have any uh, other additives in it like perfume stuff like that now that sounds easy well I never buy bleach with perfume in it go read the fine print on that Clorox bottle right? and almost all of them in the store have got other additives you need pure uh, chlorine bleach now additionally if that bottle's been sitting in your laundry room 
for so long, you hit that six month mark, you start losing the ability of that, uh, that bleach to properly treat that water. So you've, you've really got to, and that's why they give you such a big latitude of uh, uh, use seven to 12 drops of bleach per gallon of water. Right? But understand, it really depends on the strength of that, of that bleach. Again, I'm not big on that. Are there other ways to treat the water? There are. Again, I don't have time today, but we've got, matter of fact, two separate videos just on water treatment chemically. We cover everything from iodine to uh, uh, potassium hypochlorite, all kinds of different ways, filtration. All, and again, you can find those in our video, video archive. Right? Now, so treatment, go, go watch those videos. Sources, you know what you've got better than what I got. How do we store water at our houses? now? Buying cases of water, um, okay, uh, they'll, they'll store. They'll store fairly well. Uh, there are people that will buy the big five gallon jugs that you'll see in the, the water coolers, like in the hallways and businesses and stuff. We'll go meet around the water cooler. Those water jugs, they store very, very well. Matter of fact, they're the correct width to put between your rafters up in your attic, right? The, the problem though is if you're gonna refill them from tap water or you're going to refill, I know people that uh, they reuse uh, like juice jugs and uh, two and three liter uh, Coke bottles, that's fine. You've got to wash them out good, but understand uh, if you've got one, one bacteria in that tap water and you've left a little bit of sugar even though you've washed out that juice bottle or that Coke bottle, you've got a little bit of sugar left in there to feed that one bacteria. You don't need two bacteria to mate. That one bacteria is gonna split and then split again and then split again. So uh, uh, storing water in jugs, okay, uh, but you still gotta treat it. Still got to treat it. Don't forget, don't just think, well, I can put it up, I don't have to store it. I mean, I don't have to treat it. You are going to have to treat that water. And then you need to be checking, better to rotate it every six months, but if you can't, at least be checking it. And uh, I, you know your chlorine strips, make sure you've got enough chlorine left in it to keep it stored like that. Does that make sense? Makes sense, it's not hard, right? Now, so you basically, um, when you go to fill uh, water, let's say, I like using these water bricks right here. Um, three gallons of water. I mean, I don't, I don't really don't care what you use, but uh, you, the, these bricks, and if you start getting into, uh, uh, people will talk about making uh, bomb bunkers or fallout uh, shelters for uh, nuclear blasts, which is kind of on the news. But if you get that deep into it, understand so much earth to stop radiation, but so many layers of books will stop radiation, but also so much layers of water. So what I like about these is you could literally, let's say you're in a small apartment, you could wall one wall of your apartment with these bricks and you're only losing uh, 10 inches of depth on that one room, that's it, right? So they, they store awesome, but if, if you're gonna look at keeping these, you've got, uh, you've got basically two options. You can fill them and store them, right? But if you do that, understand you're, you're gonna have to treat them uh, chemically, but then you're also going to have to rotate them out uh, every six months, pour the water out, check it again. The other option is that you're just going to store them empty, store them empty. I, I store these empty. I don't keep these full. I mentioned I have access to water sources. Uh, so I store them empty, but then I would have to fill them if there's ever that emergency happens. The big, uh, big earthquake happens and the, we lose our water source, uh, we lose electricity, you can fill these things and then put them up. But when you look at that, you, between those two options, you have to make that decision. Am I gonna fill them ahead of time and then store or store, fill afterwards? If you're thinking about filling them later on, uh, the question is, will you have time? For example, if I'm home, okay, I've got the presence of mind to do it, but if I'm out in Texas teaching classes, is my wife or my son gonna remember, hey, here's the laundry list of things we're supposed to do before dad gets home, one of them being fill all of his psycho jugs he's got up in the attic, all right? You understand, uh, weigh the pros and cons. Another option for storing is food grade barrels. You can get these barrels, uh, and you can buy brand new ones online, but you can get them at, 
uh, restaurants all over the place. Uh, I, I recommend you drop a little extra money. You get these off of Amazon, but, but if you're gonna make sure you use our Amazon store, you go to tacticalrifleman.com. Pretty well, come to think of it, everything you buy off of Amazon, that big screen TV, everything, you should go to tacticalrifleman.com and then click on my Amazon store. But anyways, uh, Christmas coming up, work with me. All right, so anyways, I get these barrels off of Amazon. Uh, again, I store them empty. But if I needed to, I could uh, wire these things up. I could have them collection, rainwater. Um, they're, they are great for storing. And they're also great for treating because you're not having to check uh, chlorine levels on 50 different things. You're only having to do it just that one time. All right. So um, they're, they're, they're a decent option. Um, tell me if you have time. Now, um, Fill them, store them, and um, yeah, but you know, I'm gonna get a little deeper into that, but before I do, uh, let's break real quick. I'm gonna let YouTube slap you right in the face with a commercial. All right, so let's say you, let's say you make that decision that uh, you're gonna keep these barrels empty and uh, you wanna do water uh, rain collection with them. All right, I've got the high gutters coming down on my house. Uh, saying I'll just, run water into these. And there, there's some great uh, do-it-yourself uh, survival books out there where they'll show you different ways to stack these things vertically and then connect them uh, so that they will fill every time it rains. That's awesome. And if, you've, uh, if you're mechanically inclined, you want to do that ahead of time. Uh, it's easy to do. Good PVC pipe, the elbows, everything. Again, follow the directions, do it properly. You, you want to make it so that they'll also self-empty uh, if they overflow. And they're good to already have set in place. Just use that water to, uh, to you know, for your garden and uh, things like that. Clean the vehicles but uh, not necessarily use it as an everyday water source for your family. Because again, if you're going to do that, you've got to have a really good filtration system set up that is also going to be uh, where you can chemically treat it also, right? So for me, that's more of a rainy day project, right? Now, um, but if you're going to do it as a rainy day, understand that you've got to have all those, the correct piping, the fittings, all that stuff. You still need to have a way to treat it. And not everybody's mechanically inclined, right? Uh, but again, water barrels is one of the best ways that you can go. Now, one thing I thought was cool was I saw this other company and they make this thing called Waterfall. That's this little jug right here. Now, um, where this one, could I fill this one up with the water hose off of my, the side of my house? I could, I could, I could fill this up with uh, water, but then I've got to empty it out or keep it treated every, you know, every six months I'd have to do that. One, that's a lot of wasted water. I could use it on the garden. I could pour it in a pool, I guess, but uh, that's extra work. I like things that take care of themselves. So I started looking at this one. This is called Waterfall. It's 30 gallons. So you look in a family of four that gives you basically seven days worth of water and two extra gallons for the puppies, right? I'm, I'm big on that, right? Now, the cool part is it is hooked up to the tap on your house, your regular water hose. The water comes in. It has a, um, it has a pressure release valve on the top, but once you've got it filled, every time you every basically every time you use your garden hose whether you're washing the vehicle or whatever you still have the same water pressure i mean you, i've got the same water pressure i always have i don't have to mess with that but the cool part is as i'm running this thing washing my car watering the uh, watering the plants flowers doing whatever it is constantly circulating the water in here so i don't have to treat it i don't have to worry about rotating the water out every six months this thing uh it continually the more you use it the more it recirculates water it stays full it stays full uh um the company's called waterfall you can pull it up online i'll tell you what i'll, I'll leave a link for it below down in the description um They've got Department of State contracts and stuff because this is what they're using uh, 
for a lot of our government uh, installations overseas and in other places because if there's a siege on it, whatever, uh, natural disaster there, basically if you've got one of these at every spigot on the whole thing, guys, 30 gallons here, 30 gallons on the next side and around. I've got two, two uh, spigots on my house that I use all the time, one here in the backyard one out front by the vehicles, all right? So if I had two of these set up, I've got one right now, but if I had two in place, even if I'm out of town, guys, that's 60 gallons of water. Cut the main line coming in the house, earthquake, whatever, that's 60 gallons of water, two weeks worth of water that my family doesn't have to worry about, your family doesn't have to worry about. So anyway, it's called Waterfall. Again, I'm a big fan of the, the, uh, the blocks. They're called water bricks. I do jugs. I try to try all these different methods of storing water so that you guys don't have to, all right? And, and that's the whole point of our channel is we wanna arm you guys with the knowledge so that you can make those educated decisions, all right? So again, one gallon of water per person in your household per day, right? Um, we've covered treatment of the water chemically and filtering it. We've covered that in other videos that you can uh, find in our video archive. You have options for storage. I understand they take up room uh, if you live in a small apartment. I understand they cost money and we're all on tight budgets. I got that. But at the end of the day, you've got to ask yourself, are you going to have time to deal with this when the actual emergency happens? And the reality is there are so many different subjects that we need to take care of uh, when we have that situation, that's why it is so important for us to prepare ahead of time. So anyways, if you guys got questions, leave them in the comment section below. You know I read them all. I'll get back to you. And again, uh, thank you for hanging out with us here at Tactical Rifleman. If you like this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter so you don't miss out on anything.